Uh, what is going on guys? Coach Show here, located at the Lion's Den. In this video, we're going to be talking about the five things that I've learned from Alan Thrall. So let's get right to it. So like I said, guys, in the intros, we're going to be talking about the five things I learned from Alan Thrall. Where's Alan Thrall and what'd you do with him? Alan Thrall is a baby bat. Now, Alan Thrall and I go back several years. We became buddies uh, just through mutual contacts, and I've done a lot of collaborations over the years with Alan at his gym, Untamed Strength in Sacramento, which is really just a strength sport gym. I would say there's a lot of strongman athletes, powerlifters, uh, just general you know, population clients. Uh, and he does an awesome job at that gym. So if you're ever in the area, make sure you guys check out his gym. And he's put out tons of fantastic videos. He's no stranger to the fitness and strength community. Uh, and almost at a million subscribers on YouTube, which is just phenomenal. So check out his channel. Uh, but like I said, we've been friends for a good amount of time. And he also was my coach uh, for a few years, which is also the same time frame when I became a 2019 National Strongman Champion. He was my coach and helped me with that. So that's our background. So I wanna get right to the five uh, points that I have on what he's taught me. And I think you guys can find some value in it. So let's go. So right off the bat, guys, the first big concept that Alan Thrall had kind of changed my, my mind on and also implemented uh, to myself when he was coaching me and now I use it for everybody else that I program for is RPE, so rate of perceived exertion. And that was pretty foreign to me at the time. And I remember when I first got my program, I looked at it and I was scratching my head like, what is this? Is this even gonna work? Uh, am I gonna like it? And you know, truth be told, I actually fell in love with using RPE. There's a ton of reasons why. And you guys can click the link above to figure out why I like RPE. He's also done a really good job on his channel. So make sure you guys watch his explanation of RPE. Uh, but that was a game changer for me. Uh, I was often using percentage-based programming. And when I switched over to RPE, I had a little bit of a learning curve, but then I quickly realized how beneficial it was for my training and also just auto-regulation, okay? There wasn't much of an auto-regulation when it came to my training in the past, and it was very concrete, right? I had to hit whatever sets or whatever reps, uh, and I either found out that I wasn't pushing myself enough or I was pushing too hard for too long, and I ended up just crashing and burning. RPE is the first one. It's something I absolutely love, so check out those videos, and I know it'll help you guys out if you use it to its full capability. Now the second uh, principle that I have really grasped from him and this has to do with programming is putting more time into the main movement and less time in accessory work when it comes to getting stronger and strength sports specifics. Now, it may sound familiar how we used to program, but basically I have my main movement and then after that main movement, I would go into three or four exercises for accessory lifts that would help strengthen that main movement. Uh, and I did this for years and years. And in the beginning it did work. However, I did hit a stalling point and I kept rerunning the same type of rep schemes and accessory work that I was doing and I wasn't getting better. And it wasn't until I worked with Alan where I saw, instead of putting all the volume into the accessory work, putting just more volume into the main movement, that my main movement got better. And that was just the principle of specificity working at its finest, okay? If you wanna get better at deadlifts, you gotta deadlift more. Uh, not to say there's not a time and a place for accessory work, but I would say I was putting maybe 25% of my time and volume into the main lift, and then I was putting the rest in accessory, where basically I flip flop that, where I'm putting 75% of my time and energy into the main lift and variation, whatever I'm doing, and then the rest in accessory. And for me personally, and all the athletes that I program and work for, that seems to work wonders uh, when it comes to getting stronger and specifically for strength training. So it doesn't really apply necessarily for hypertrophy, uh, but for strength training, that was a huge takeaway as my number two. So tip number three, guys, that I learned from Alan is about pain management. And if you guys didn't know, Alan is actually a part of a company called Barbell Medicine, and they put the latest and greatest information when it comes to evidence-based research, uh, whether that's with training, nutrition, health, etc. cetera. Uh, but a big part of that is devoted to pain management and the science of pain. So I'll use a quick example of what I would do in the past before I knew all about this, is if I felt ache, pain, tweak, whatever, I just either wouldn't train, okay? So I would completely just stop training, I would avoid that movement, uh, or it also maybe turn into a bigger issue than it was. So 
I don't want to give you guys spoilers, and I encourage you to go check out Alan's channel and anything you type in Alan Thrall Pain or Barbell Medicine Pain. You're going to learn a ton about it, and you're also going to learn the steps to take when you do feel a pain, injury, or tweak so that you are able to train throughout and make a lot of progress and a lot of gains. So that was uh, just a big game changer for me personally, how I view pain, how I handle pain, how I treat pain, uh, learning about what pain actually is. And I try to pass that on, not only with my own training, but the clients uh, and the people that I serve in my profession. All right, so fourth one uh, actually has to do with creating content, okay? So I've been around Alan for several years now. We talk a lot about the business aspect of it. We also talk about content creation, you know, and how to grow our platforms and our content while making us happy as well as the viewers, okay? Because we do this because we enjoy it and we love it. And it's also great to just connect with other content creators and see kind of how they go about things and how do they uh, set up proper structures so that there is growth. and. One of the biggest things that Alan had taught me is about pillar content. So basically, when you're getting started uh, and, and you try to make really specific videos and you don't have a name for yourself yet, it's gonna be really hard to grow, okay? So for example, if I'm dialing deep into the axle bar clean and press setup, it's probably not gonna be a big trending video, although I may have a lot of awesome things to say about it. If I'm trying to grow and get my brand and my name out there, we're gonna to have to start to basically cast out our line to a bigger audience at first and hit big topics. So for me, getting my channel started, I put out a lot of how-to videos on the bench, the squat, the deadlift, the overhead press. I threw in more generalized uh, tutorial and topic videos to grow the foundation, okay? And once we have that foundation, we can then dive deeper to a smaller uh, you know, population or grouping get very specific. But if we're looking for growth, we have to have these big hitting pillars uh, to basically grow our audience. So from a business perspective and a content creator's perspective, that was something that really had helped me uh, was by creating pillar content and growing that base and that audience. And then now, since you guys know, like, and trust me, I can talk about smaller topic things and they can get good traction and you guys can be the experts with me on some sort of topics. Number five, which is the last one, and this is very, very serious, and this was something that I learned through Alan Thrall, uh, and you know, it was something I don't think I ever would have really known if it wasn't for him, uh, and that's the fact that there's a big difference between sour cream and ice cream. Let me tell you. Oh, okay, punch number. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. We ready? Yep. Yeah. All right. There's your plate. What is this? It's like ass. You gotta keep tasting it. No. <laughs> what is going on with you? I gotta guess what this is. Hmm. Oh. This tastes, is, you like this? It's not bad. Wait, you're actually eating this? <laughs> I don't know. Did I get something wrong? Like, is this, this is horrible. <laughs> I'm ready to guess, I know what it is. Oh my God. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> I need a plate. Whoa. You had to make the damn sour <laughs> You got me How on the that? taco. Oh, wow. I thought it was, I thought it was only the burger. <laughs> Those tears. Oh my god. I felt like I took a full <laughs> shot of that mad dog. All right, but that's pretty much it, guys. I want to make this video pretty short, sweet, to the point. Uh, and just really thank Alan Thrall for all the content he's put out. He's created an amazing community, an awesome gym. He's just a good dude in general. He's one of the realest people you'll ever meet, and hopefully, you get the chance to meet. Uh, and if you aren't watching his stuff, you're living under a rock, so get out there, subscribe to his channel, check out all his content videos. You're gonna learn just so much, and it's cool to see his journey if you start from his older videos all the way to where he is now. Uh, you know, he's a man of growth and just practices what he preaches. So uh, thank you so much, Alan, for the videos. Thank you for being my friend and someone I can look to, uh, ask for guidance and help along my journey, and just being a kick-ass individual. So that's all I have, guys. Everything you need to know is down in the description below. Follow him. Check out all the stuff I got going on. Uh, but that's it, guys. Just stay a lean, mean, trank machine. 
Catch you guys next time. Peace.